this is Kyra, a camera that can do this, but can also do this. Interchangeable lenses, and it magnetically snaps onto your iPhone, giving you a grip, giving you a shutter button, but more importantly, instantly transferring every picture to your phone, allowing it to have GPS tagging, encryption, and instant sharing. Kyra, the second generation of Alice camera, has a couple of the tricks up its sleeve, like it will instantly edit your photos by using your voice. Remove the people and make the photo at night and make the water smooth. <gasps> it's a camera designed for creators. It's a camera for people who don't want to read the manual for the camera. It's a camera that's only $699 and I think it's worth checking out. I'll tell you all about it, but first, if you're gonna be in New York City, I have workshops about once a month now at this link. You will learn portraits, posing, studio lighting from me personally in a studio right here in Manhattan. Let's take a look at the design of the Kyra. First, it's micro four thirds, which means a sensor that's about four times bigger than your iPhone, but about a quarter the size of a full frame camera. It opens up a world of micro four thirds lenses, everything from just general purpose zooms to nice portrait lenses that give you lots of bokeh. And that's really the secret behind it. That's what it's doing better than your iPhone can do is real optical quality. The user interface is minimal. It has a USB-C port there for charging. It has a one button that you hold down to turn it on and then you can see one little light there that just tells you that it's operating. The real user interface is the Kyra app which connects with Wi-Fi to the camera and allows you to just point the camera anywhere, whether or not the phone is actually attached to your camera. It is a shoe, but it's a cold shoe, not a hot shoe, so it can't trigger a flash, but you could potentially stick a microphone or something on there. There's a real shutter button and a little rest for your hand to make it a little bit easier. The edges are sharp, kind of like a Leica, and honestly, it's a little bit uncomfortable in the hand, but it's so small and light that it doesn't really create a problem. Because the user interface is a smartphone app, it's natural and intuitive. The app gives you plenty of options for real-time filters if that's your thing. And of course, when you go to review photos, everything happens instantly and is extremely intuitive. There's no lag like there is on other cameras, just pinch, pull, zoom, whatever you want. Some of these things could be considered disadvantages, like it doesn't have a viewfinder. And for some people, that's a must have, especially if you're farsighted and you already have a difficult time looking at your phone screen. Well, there's no diopter on a viewfinder that will correct your vision. So you're still gonna have a difficult time looking at your phone screen and you might still be distracted by your phone. That's one thing I like about a dedicated camera. But of course, this design choice is extremely unique in the industry, giving you optical quality with the ability to instantly share. And for that reason, I'm really glad that Kyra has bucked the design trend of literally every other camera on the market. You can't replace the battery. Instead, just USB-C charge it like you probably do your phone. And the battery might run out over the course of a day, so it wouldn't hurt to like carry a USB-C charger and plug it in while you're having lunch or something just to make sure that it doesn't die. There's no memory card in it because all photos are instantly transferred to your phone. So that's kind of an advantage. The real power of Kyra is that it's using your phone for intelligence. They've integrated with Google's nano banana generative AI engine. And what this allows you to do is to take a picture, talk to Kyra and tell it the changes you want to make. For example, I went to the Dumbo Park in Brooklyn to take pictures of the Manhattan skyline. And as always, there were a whole bunch of people there kind of messing up my shot. Now, in the past, before Kyra, what I would have had to have done is to put my camera on a tripod and take dozens of pictures over maybe 10 minutes and then stack those images and manually blend out all the people on the beach. With Kyra, all I had to do was speak to it and say, remove the people from the foreground. And in a few seconds, it did that for me. This is pretty amazing. You can ask it to do just about anything. You could change the color of somebody's shirt or hair. You could change their outfit entirely. You could change still water into flowing water or a short exposure into a long exposure. You could change a day photo into a night photo. And your first instinct might be, well, that's not a camera then. You're just using AI imaging, right? And, and I disagree because all of this is based on the original image that you took. And as a guy who's written a bunch of books on Lightroom and Photoshop post-processing, these are 
almost all things that I've done in the past that would take me many hours to do. And now I can do it on location in a matter of seconds. And I don't need to learn Photoshop or layers or any of that. So for me, it's not necessarily adding anything new. For me, it's making the post processing that I used to do happen instantly quicker, meaning I can share the pictures on location instead of needing to wait a couple of days until I got around to Photoshopping it. But it also means I spend less time on my computer and more time taking pictures because Kyra is the first camera that's really leveraging the intelligence of a phone and software in the era of software. The team at Cairo is able to connect to Nano Banana and just take advantage of all the incredible tech that Google has put into that engine. But it's kind of live by the sword, die by the sword, I think. Like Nano Banana could go away. And Nano Banana is not free when it's used like that. So right now, if you sign up with Kickstarter, they'll give you six months free usage of the Nano Banana engine. And after that, you'd have to pay $7 a month to get access to that. Nano Banana also has some boundaries, like it won't take somebody's clothes off. And in fact, I took a picture of myself and asked it to make me more handsome and it wouldn't do it. All right, I guess we all know that Google has just put up some boundaries in their image processing and thus you might not be able to do everything that you do, but, but really I ran into very few instances where it wouldn't edit the picture in exactly the way that I wanted it to. Of course, your phone is not powerful enough on its own to do that sort of AI image editing locally. So it needs to round trip to the cloud. Basically you take a picture and then if you ask it to be edited with AI, it will go up to Google's servers on the cloud, provided that you, your phone has an internet connection and then come back to you. Now, Google says they'll keep your images private, but there's always the possibility of them getting hacked. I'm not too worried about it. And I don't think any pictures I would be taking with this would be that private anyway. In day to day use, I found the Kyra to be incredibly meaningful. This means that I now share images of events as the event is happening. My workflow used to be take a bunch of pictures, go back home, copy the pictures to my computer, wait for the previews to render. And then when I had time, go through them and share them. And that meant that things got shared a couple of days after the event. Now everything's on my phone instantly. So I could pop it up on an Instagram story or airdrop it to whoever I'm taking a picture of. And that's something that all cameras should have, but only one camera really has today. And if that doesn't sound like you, if you like the old way of doing things, taking out the memory card, putting it into a memory card reader, importing it into Lightroom, editing it, making it perfect and polishing it and then sharing it, then good news, like literally every other camera on the market is designed for that exact workflow. But I think it's good news that we have one camera that does things a little bit differently. If you're listening to this and you think, oh, I would love to be able to share pictures instantly on location. Oh yeah, I would love to be able to do an hour and a half of Photoshop work with one sentence and then pop it off to the client and have the job done instead of having to follow up with them via email, then, then Kyra might be perfect for you. I, I haven't found any major problems in many days of use. It feels lightweight. As long as I keep my phone on and the app running, it seems to stay connected and is very responsive. The autofocus is fine. It's not great. It's not uh, an amazing sports camera. It's not a wildlife camera for still subjects, portraits. It will detect faces and automatically focus on them for things like landscapes, bridges. It, the autofocus is, is fine, but it's not quick autofocus. So it's not going to replace my A1 or my Canon R5, but this is more for casual photography. And that applies to video, especially the video autofocus is, is okay, but it's not great. I wouldn't use it for this kind of thing where I have shallow depth of field and I'm pushing things in and out. I'm still going to use my a7S three for that, or one of my Canon cameras. The Kyra for me is more about instantly sharing still photos. If you're interested in Kyra, check it out at this link here. It's currently a Kickstarter project and that can get a little bit complicated. I wouldn't normally even promote Kickstarter projects because there is some risk involved and some Kickstarters never end up happening. And I suppose those risks do theoretically exist, but this is the company's second generation of camera. They did deliver the first. I have been working closely with the actual founder, not getting paid by them. Just uh, it's a company that I'm interested in because they're 
finally bringing the power of software to the camera industry. And I think the potential is almost unlimited. And I just sort of want to be an advocate for this. And by using Kickstarter, they helped to raise the funds to do the full production run. But it does seem like this is a production ready camera. So I feel pretty good about it. I also think Kyra's biggest strength is in the potential, the potential to unlock new features simply by running a software upgrade. The, the fact that Kyra's software developers don't have to develop software for the archaic camera operating systems that we see from Canon, Nikon, Sony, and the rest of the Japanese companies, the fact that they can code for an iPhone app and how much potential that unlocks for things like computational photography and AI, I think Kyra has the potential to surpass all the other cameras in a very short amount of time, especially by simply connecting to AI. I mean, think about how far AI has come in just one year. Well, that same rate of improvement can come to Kyra. So the camera I'm reviewing today probably isn't nearly as powerful as the camera that will exist one year from now, especially if it's growing at the pace of AI. What do you think? Does the camera industry need this? Does it need somebody that's pushing the boundaries that's thinking a little bit differently? Or would you rather have just another camera that looks exactly like all the other cameras? In the comments, let me know. Don't forget to check out my workshops at this link here and to subscribe for more free product reviews and tutorials. Bye.